Hello and welcome to the Combined Joint Task Force's DCS Refresher Course video series. This will be a supplemental lesson covering recent updates to the AV-8B Night Attack Harrier, in particular the Generation 4 implementation of the T-Pod, as well as the new method for JDAM Target of Opportunity Strikes. Alright, before we get started, I wanted to take a quick look at the controls you're going to need to have bound, or no. They're going to be your nose wheel snaring, your waypoint increment, as well as your left, right, aft, and down sensor select switches. Alright, we'll go ahead and come over. To activate the TGP is the same as always. Just go to menu, select T-Pod, standby. Note that the targeting pod is currently four-sided out ahead of us. Come over here to the EHSD, select our target waypoint, which I know is our number three waypoint. We got some targets there. And then I'm going to designate it the way I always would. Note now that we have this STP here, which means that this point has become our SD, or our sensor designated target. And it is also our current steer point, which is what the STP is for. And now we can see on our targeting pod that it has been slaved to that waypoint. Note that if it has not been slaved and it's still up here bore sided or pointed somewhere else, you can hit the slave button here and it will move it to your sensor designated target. You go ahead and zoom in down here on the targeting pod. All right, so before when you came to this screen, you'd have to click the OSB next to TDC and make an underline in order for you to be able to slew your targeting pod with your TDC slew. That is no longer the case. Now we will have to hit that HUD reject. So it'd be sensor select down twice with two quick presses and now you can slew the TGP around. Also note that the same HOTAS controls from before still are in effect. So if you go sensor select left long for one second more and release, you'll move into laser spot search. If you single press sensor select left, you will switch between wide and narrow field of views. Your sensor select right long, press and hold will switch you between FLIR and CCD. Short presses will swap you between black hot and white hot. Your sensor select aft, if you hold it for one second more, you're going to switch to the INR track. If you press it short, it will switch you between the area track, point track, and moving target track. Note that the moving target track functions the same way as the point track. In the future, it should have some more functionality. Also note over here on the side, this MTC that replaced the old TDC button, that it's going to be your multiple target queuing, which that's not implemented yet either. It will be at a later update, hopefully the next one. If these two items are significant enough, I may do an update video, but if not, you'll just have to read up on it. All right, so that covers the HOTAS controls. We'll go ahead and start around the outside. The laser is controlled the same way it was before, so you have to hit your safe button here in order to arm it. Then we have our laser ranging here. We have our fire button that will fire whatever laser you have selected here. We now have a couple of new lasers, so that's our training, our standard laser for lasing for GPU-12s or laser-guided munitions. Then we have the DNM, which is our designator and marker, so that's going to be your standard laser as well as an IR laser. Then we have just our pure IR laser here on the marker, and the EYES laser, which is a lower intensity laser meant to not blind troops on the ground. Over here we have our SWFE, which is our super wide field of view button. Note that when you go into the super wide field of view, it will pull the camera back to its maximum zoom, but it will also turn off the laser. So as you can see, it is now zoomed way out compared to what it was a minute ago. And our laser has been turned to safe and I cannot unsafe the laser. Also, if we're not in the super wide field of view and we go to our CZD, when you press your super wide field of view, it will pull you out, but it will also automatically switch you back into the FLIR mode. Note that you can press and hold the super wide field of view button for one second more and then release and it will switch you into nav mode. Okay, go ahead and come out of that. All right, I already talked about the MTC. Down here we have the PIP. This used to be our laser spot search track button. In order to press the button down here for laser spot track, it'll be the INR. You press a hold for one second or more and then release. Note when you're in laser spot track, if you want to come out of that and then slave the TGP back to your sensor designated target, simply hit your nose wheel steering button and it will pull you out of that. All right, I think that's everything around here. Also the zoom, it has been increased up to 16 times. As you can see, we're going way in zoom. All right, now that we've had a chance to look at the targeting pods, controls, and systems, I wanted to touch on how it works in conjunction with the SD. Now, if we come over here and look, I still have my waypoint 3 selected, and it's designated as my SD, which is indicated by the STP. So when you see STP, it should mean that the 
steer point and target point are the same. And if we come up here and look on my HUD, you can see in the center I have the diamond, which is my SD or sensor designated target. Around that we have our current steer point, and then around the outside of that is the TGP's octagon. Now, according to the documentation, when you move the TGP, the steer point and the target point should remain the same until you hit your TDC down press action to designate a new target. Then it should move the diamond to the TGP, and we will get some change down here, which I'll show in a second. But currently, right now, as soon as you move the targeting pod and release, the diamond automatically updates. So I think that will be changing in the future. And if it does, you just have to keep that in mind. Because down here, we still see that the steer point is showing, which should indicate that the target and the steer point are at the same location, which they're clearly not. Now, according to the documentation, once you find a location where you want to mark targets, you hit your TDC down action, which should then move the diamond and change down here to TGT. Now I'll go ahead and do that now. So I'm hitting my TDC down action and releasing. Now you'll see the TGT down here, which should indicate that the steer point and target point are at two different locations, but we were already seeing that from before. So just keep that in mind in the next patch or two, they'll probably fix that. So now if I move my targeting pod, note that the targeting fill should be maintaining with it and the steer point is somewhere different. In order to get the steer point to match my TGP, you have to find a location you want it and then hit your waypoint increment button for one second and then release. Now my steer point and target point are again on the same location. At this time, down here, the TGT should switch back to STP, which it is not. Note also that now I'm no longer on waypoint three, it is now T0. And from here, the steer point and the target point should be following my TGP as I move it. But again, note that just the targeting point is following it, that the steer point is not. In order to get the steer point to update right now, you have to hit the TDC down action, short press again, and it will update the steer point. So I just move my TGP, release, the targeting point updates automatically, the steer point does not, so I have to hit my weapon designate button or TDC down action in order to get it to update. Again, in the future, that will probably change. Just keep that in mind. I just wanted to go over the current functionality of it so that people could use it. Okay, so how this relates to dropping JDAMs in the TOO mode. I'll go down here, set myself in air-to-ground mode, select my J82Ls, set my fusing to instantaneous. Go ahead and go master arm on. I'll go ahead and unsafe my laser that my ranging as I normally would, hit my waypoint increment button, release. Now I have my symbology to drop my JDAMs. Note that I'm currently already within the ring. I'll go ahead and slew off that target and watch it down here. As soon as I release, note that it updates its position. So you do not have to do anything other than just move the TGP once you've done your waypoint increment button one time to lock everything up to it. This appears to be functioning as it should, so in order to drop multiple JDAMs in one pass, you would simply come over here, find a target, drop, adjust, drop, adjust, drop, which I'll show here in just a second. Alright, real quick, I also wanted to touch on how to get back on target, so I'm out here finding targets, and I have nothing left, and I'm trying to get back to my waypoint 3, come over here, so I have T0 selected, I would simply just cycle through to waypoint 3, undesignate, redesignate, and then hit my nose wheel steering button and it'll put me right back onto my waypoint three. As you'll note, I went ahead and threw in a couple more targets. So the gun on this end. And all I simply need to do is from here, I'll unpause. First I'll hit my TDC action down to ensure that my T pod is my SD. Then I'll go ahead and unsafe my laser. Hit my laser range finding and then press and hold my waypoint increment and release. Now down here I've got my steering cues on my EHSD as well as my release here. Go ahead and fine tune by zooming in a bit more. There we go. And then I simply need to close with the target until I get within the maximum launch ring. I'll get my countdown down here. Once I get into the 90 to 100 range, I'll go ahead and drop, switch targets down here on the TGP and drop until all targets have been dropped on. All 
actually going to drop a little bit early to maximize my launch window on all targets. I'll go ahead and release now. The wing rock tells me that I have ordnance off. Try to get on target here. Release another. Release another. Some of these are not going to be the most accurate. That's for sure. And all 10 are away. Go ahead and come back down. Go into my super wide field of view. Again, this will be absolute best case scenario. I know these vehicles aren't going to move because I've turned their movement off. Just to show that you can, in fact, do multiple JDAM strike using this method. And there we go. So it looks like I missed one target out there out of those. But that's how you do target opportunity mode using the new SD method. Thank you for your time and attention.